Today I wanted to show an example of a, a futures call that was a perfect setup but ended up not playing out. And this just demonstrates that nothing in the market is 100%, which is why you have to have an entire stop loss methodology and system in place for how you manage your trades once you get into them. This includes many, many variables. This particular trade includes many, many variables that we like to see in a trade setup and just didn't end up working. And we'll talk about why right after we show the trade. So here's the ES today. Uh, at the start of the session and five minute bars with our futures, what we call our futures levels. And what you see here is this shaded area, this darker background area between this light blue line here and what we call the purple line here. That's the value area, okay? And the reason this lower line is purple is because there's really two lines there. There's the, there's the light blue line for the value area low and then across the other side up here is the value area high. But there's also a purple line for what we call our lower gap fill threshold. So there's two lines right on top of each other at the same number. Now that always catches my attention. So here we are, two five minute bars into the session, 10 minutes in. You can see we gap down in the morning. Now I'm going to push this forward a bit and let's just see uh, what happens as the morning plays out. Obviously the market back and forth here uh, down at the open for the first 30 or 40 minutes and then we start to break out. Now look at this move right here. Look how we came up and we exactly to the tick hit what is both the value area low and the lower pressure threshold. Now this to me is called setting the level and this is really critical and we, we have all by itself a play called a value area play which is that once you break uh, into the value area from outside of it, there's about an 80% chance that you'll cross the value area. And at the same time, we also always like to watch the lower and upper pressure thresholds, very important levels of support and resistance in the market. So the fact that both of them are on top of each other and on this big spike up, we hit it exactly, really means that the market's paying attention to that level. So usually, if you get through that level after that, it's going to be a good trade on the long side. And as you can see, we, we consolidate here for a couple of bars, which is great. You like to see that. Everything's going well here. And then what happens is you get this next move, and you break into the value area. So it triggers our long idea right here uh, in, the, uh, in the ES. And now you can see the shaded area. I've zoomed it forward a little bit just so we can track it. So 80% of the time now, we're going to go across. But it should really be even higher of a percentage chance because a, we set the level, and B, that level was an even bigger uh, support or resistance point that we set and now broke. So usually I would look at this and say there's better than a 90% chance. On top of it, the gap fill from yesterday's close is way up here. Okay, so again, in my mind, this is a really nice setup. And then as we watch it play out, we use a six tick stop uh, on our ES, and look what ends up happening. We float around here for a bit, and then we come back down. Okay. And in fact, head much lower. We were stopped out for six ticks on this bar back here. So the trade ends up not working out. So again, just because you have a lot of components that you like to see in a setup, even, no matter how high probability you consider the trade, nothing's ever 100%. And that's why it's important to stick to a, a strict stop loss strategy. You can always get back in if it goes again, but you definitely don't want to end up in a position where you fall off on the ES way back down here and you're in up here. That's a pretty big loss.